Mont Ventoux, the giant top of Vont, an extinct volcano sitting alone in the flat Provence landscape. There it is. You've seen it in the Tour de France. Here's the profile of the road from Bedouin, 20 kilometres long, split into three sections really. The first bit, not so steep in the vines. The second bit, very steep. And the third bit, not so steep, but it's exposed to the elements, the sun, the wind, whatever. And the day we rode it, it was it was pretty good, not too crazy. The youngest people to ride it, a seven-year-old girl from England with her ten-year-old sister, and they rode it in two hours, 20 minutes, with the parents following in a car. And this young boy from England, nine, very committed, did this climb along with many others. He's uh, apparently very self-motivated. And then this is Tom's story. This is Tom when he was a little boy running around the garden on a little balance bike. We did some hiking together when he was four and five. And I used to take him to school on a bike. Wasn't too many kilometers. And on that bike, we went to the Tour de France. You recognize this guy from the Tour de France. And we had a good time, we had a great day. We saw lots of riders, and this kind of set the idea in his head to one day do the Vont too, because he saw other children on bikes. And he's like, oh, why aren't I on, a, on my own bike, Daddy? Why are you too little, Tom? So uh, we had a great day, that's a different video, and here comes the Tour de France, and there's the other jersey of Chris Room. And this is Paris-Nice on a really cold day. We used to go out and do things like that. But cycling for Tom, he didn't really get it when he was little. Here he is. Yeah, there you go, Daddy. I cycled. Off I go. And we kept trying. This is in England. This is him um, learning to ride with one hand. Uh, cycling is kind of limited. There's not much you can do um, for a youngster. There he is going up a hill. But when, when children are young, they can't really do much on a bike. But what they can do is uh, hiking. We did some pretty big hikes when he was little. I think he was six and a half here. We hiked, camped, packed up, and then hit up this summit of um, Mont Palet above La Calos. And then he got this Bianchi road bike. He was really happy with his bike. He entered one bike race, five kilometers. Average speed, 23 kilometers an hour. 23 kilometers an hour he won that not many people were in the race and then he um got another bike and he this was when he was eight and he really wanted to get into riding and we'd do some little bike rides and he really wanted to join a club and uh, one day we found a club and he started doing cyclocross racing because it was winter and it took a while but eventually got on the podium this is my instagram there he is with mr tumble and he got a third overall so he was super happy and after the lockdown well kind of during the lockdown even we managed to get some riding in with the right paperwork and he was kind of committed to to climbing and doing his own goal of maybe doing one one bond two so here we are at the start of summer and we've gone to go have a look at it i've got the bikes ready we've slept in a town just near bedouin and Tom's about to wake up. I was hoping to get out early, but he went to bed a bit later than he should have. So here's some breakfast. And then off we go. And this is quite early in the morning. Seven something. And we've only got around 10 kilometers to get to bed one. And the deal was I had my hand on his back to push him along this section. To just help him to get to bed one. He rode uh, a lot of it, but I said I'd give him some pushes to bed one. And there's the one too, it's a big, big, big thing. And this is bed one in the morning, and off we go, that's it, he's on his own now. And this is the start of the climb, and I believe it is 8 10 a.m. A little later than I wanted it to be because, you know, the sun is hot and he's off and we're having a good old chat. And this is it. 
he's already in um, gear two, very low gear. And we're just taking it slowly. We know it's going to be a long, long climb. The little seven-year-old girl apparently did it in two hours, 20 minutes. And for Tom, I was aiming for three, three and a half hours. And this was the first real steep bit after the church. And it's down to gear one, really struggling. And it's just about going as slow as you could go. Not bothering racing the other bikes going up. And we read the little signs. We say how far we've got to go. We're at 1,000 metres of altitude. And this is just as slow as you can go. Keep it slow. Just roll along. And I had all the food with me, the bottles of water. I was talking to him about the trees, keeping him cool, making sure he wasn't going too fast, and keeping him motivated. And we're in the shade in the trees, and that was nice, but in the sun it was hard, and this is a steep climb. And here we said, let's have a break. We'd already had a three minute break at the church. And here we had a nine minute break in this cabin looking at the cars. The old racing cars are racing up the hill. And then we're off again and this was hard because the sun was starting to get higher up and there was less shade behind the trees. And this was like, okay, you know, do I say let's turn around? Do I say, okay, we'll come back another time? But we just kept plodding on and it was it was hard. And then we started getting nearer the the um, chalet and I was talking about this Dutch corner and this is where Froome had his crash and he had to run and Tom suddenly, you know, chirped up, he got more motivated, got I was trying to like keep his speed down but he was going and we were getting near the... Um, the chalet and that was when we were planning to have our next little pause and yeah he's really floating up the climb now he can uh, sense he's done most of it and here we are at the chalet and it was hot and I had lots of water with me and I knew there was a place to fill up the three bottles here so here we go fill up and we had a 10 minute and 30 seconds stop there and then off we go again nice and slowly give him a bit of food to eat and this bit he rode on his own no problems it's not so steep I think this gear ratio was right for around 8% 10% he was struggling 8% it was working he could see that the finish was almost there and he knew he could do it and the road was Kind of close to cars, so it's nice and quiet. No crazy wind. The sun was getting hot. We know the dangers of the sun. And there's the top. Oh, he, he was tired here, but almost there, Tom. And this is the raw footage all the way to the summit now. And Tom's just managed to do it. And the time was two hours, 59 minutes and a couple of seconds. How broke him, you go. Or bed one to the top, and the average speed was 6.7 kilometers an hour, which is nice and slow. That's what it what it should be. Nice and steady. <laughs> and he's actually did it. It was hard. The bottom half was really hard, motivation-wise. But after the cafe. He knew he had it. There's a few youngsters there, 13, 14 years old, I think. And a few old people as well, it's a whole mix. 
suppose. Yeah. There he is with the yeah, sign. Tired boy, how was that? You get home? Back play some Lego? Not just aren't we going to sleep. <laughs> oh dear. Better I'm get up. And I had told them a lot about the downhill to be super careful and not overheat your brakes. And I think the fact that it was so steep with all the rocks and all the people. He was, he was quite worried by the downhill, so he took it really slowly. And we stopped quite often. I wasn't filming for the first bit of descent. He we we stopped back at this place. He's got his jacket on. I had two pairs of gloves with me. We let the tire pressures down, and we just went down bit by bit. He was using one brake for little bit for new duty of a break here we stopped for the ambulance because somebody uh, we later found out somebody had had a heart attack up there and that's something I witnessed on a recent trip up the one two someone had a heart attack and we had to help help the guy out he was only about 31 years old and someone managed to run and get a um, defibrillator and we got his heart back going when the helicopter turned up and he lived. Anyway, and here we are, having another stop, check the tyre pressures, check the heat, and he's done it. And he's happy now. The stress is over, the descent, and we're just chilling back to the van, which is part in the village, Morian, a bit further away than Bedouin, because it's a bit more thrilling to ride to the mountain and away from the mountain. And he's dead happy. He's still got some energy. And there it is in the background, a long way away. The giant of Provence has been conquered by Tom, nine and a half years old. And my gear ratio for today, I'm going to show you that I was running a 39 on the front and a 26 on the back, which is pretty old school-ish, but doable. But the problem was that Tom's speed it was really like 34 slow, 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 and Tom's running 28. 34, 28. Well, uh, 44 centimetre in a junior comp. And ideally, he would be on a smaller gear ratio. I thought that was a tiny gear ratio, but smaller would be better. There he is watching some YouTube. Mark, we just went to the lake and just back around. <coughs> so, go on, Strava. We had it running. And here you can see the time up on the top left, 7, 8 o'clock, 10 past 8, bed 1. This is the flyby data. You can see where we went 240 times the real speed. So when I stop here, that was a 3 minute stop. And you can see this, the dot stops there for a foot down. And there we stop in the hut for a 9 minute stop. Another foot down, and then we go all the way to the chalet and we stop here for 10 minutes 30 seconds. And then after that, it was just a continuous ride, a nice fun ride to the top. With a total time from bed one to the summit of just under three hours, two minutes, two hours, 59 minutes, with 25 minutes of breaks. So, totally impossible for Tom to do it in under two and a half hours at his age here. I think three hours was fine. There you go, our way down with all the stops and then cruising down back to the car and that was it. There's no way Tom could have done that at any younger age. He lacked the skills to ride down a hill. He lacked the skills to do the gears. He lacked the riding ability to keep motivated on the climb so I think nine and a half was as young as possible for Tom and and it was it was tough and I think by him doing these these hard things it teaches him that 
when something is difficult in life that he can he can do it and uh, we we did that day safely early that's sort a of bounce on our climb many many times and we did some local hills and it went well on the day nothing nothing went off plan it was uh, a good day he was happy all good <laughs>